like the old town highway department, move those stumps out of the way. The water's almost built. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not like we have to go back to the town and ask them to spend a lot of money or whatever because the need just isn't there for that for that job. Um, do you recall who does Rockwell Eastman? Oh, come up. Mm. I think it might be Mike. Okay. Or, I think it's Brian. Brian is Burgess. Okay. And you're and I'm, Brookside? No, I'm Gabriel. Okay. I'm Brookside. I don't even know who that one is. Brookside. Is that? Brookside Farm? Uh, on on, is on Wilson? Is that Tony? Uh, from Wilson? I have a phone. You have a phone, yeah, okay. Just the wood. Well, I come back in with like a tamper. Right. I, well, I mean, I'll, I'll cover this. Okay. I just don't know if. Like, I, look, I look at it. Yeah. It's just too much. It's too soft. Mm -hmm. You know what might make sense is actually just to ask the town to bring sand in. Because that, yeah, I mean, I'm not yeah. looking at the YouTube one. Because if you put sand in just from the town garage there, that stuff would probably work pretty well. Yeah, and then uh, wood chips over that, or uh, uh, sand, uh, uh, pack it down. I mean, I look at it; it it's an experiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's why I, I did that section up there. Yeah.
that ready, I'll make a motion to accept them with that one change. Yeah, I met with Jim Minnis, um, Saco District Ranger, up at Prospect Farm, showed him the gate, showed him the parking lot, and where the town had proposed moving the, changing the stump, well actually not proposed because the town actually voted in the management plan to convert the uh, stump dump into a, an additional parking lot. And um, Jim basically said that the Forest Service would be happy to move the the gate out to where the exact boundary is, so that that could be accessed as a parking lot. He did indicate, he said, actually, if you tried to get Forest Service money, we would be tied up in needing an environmental assessment and so forth before they could move ahead. With such a simple job, his recommendation was for us just to move ahead independently with a parking lot. And in addition, if the Forest Service was involved, then they would need to have an MOU with the town, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, based on the simplicity of the job up there, his recommendation is for the town just to proceed ahead to, to do that conversion without the Forest Service. So if people are ready to take the next step, which is, as I mentioned, is, was voted in with the Prospect Farm Management Plan, we would go to the uh, selectmen and ask them to have the Iowa Department go up and just sort of move the stumps back and reorganize that area so that it could be used as a parking lot. And I think we need to put up a sign that just says, when you come into the first parking lot, it just say additional parking, you know, what is this, approximately 30 yards up mm. from that spot right there. I would mention, I've been up there in the last two weeks, and, and I was up there this, this evening. Of the four times I've been up there, tonight there was nobody parked up there. The other three times I was up there, the current parking lot was both filled, plus cars parked parallel. And my observation, and this is just a crude guess, that probably 30% of those folks are hiking up to the view shed, and the other 60 or 70% are either dog walkers or walkers or runners who are typically running out on the Forest Service's Boggy Brook Trail, because most of the Boggy Brook Trail is actually on the Forest Service property. Um, the current parking lot up there is, as I think most of us know, is actually a Forest Service parking lot that was put in under an MOU with the town when they moved it off of Valentine's property up to that location. So this would be the town putting in their own parking lot, basically, for up there. Um, and so then the idea then is just to leave, not touch the gate, leave the gate there? No, you have to move the gate or they couldn't access the new parking lot. Okay. Oh, right, because the gate's... The gate's open and the, the purpose open of the so gate, the yeah, reason yeah, why yeah. the Forest Service gate was put there, I think uh, it was pre my time, but it's my understanding it was put there so that anybody that was going to go up to use the stump dump had to first come and get a key yeah. so that not everybody was just up there dumping. But we've closed the stump dump through mm -hmm. the vote with the town. And, and they would still need that environmental assessment survey even though it's on town land going to town land? No. No. Town can just do it. Okay, so we can just do it. Yeah. Whereas if we had the Forest Service put money into doing it, which would be good, gotcha. you'd have to go through an environmental assessment at a minimum with them. Okay. And then in addition, you'd have to go through and develop an MOU because the Forest Service is, is involved in the whole project, which really doesn't make any sense. Gotcha. You know, to build a whole new parking lot, I think it would be a different ball game, but we're talking about just asking the selectmen to have the highway department go up there. I think the highway department has been up there because some of the holes 
Mm. I mean, that road was getting pretty deep. There's, there's still a bunch of big deep pits up there in, in the road to get up there, but it looks like some fellow has been brought up to work up there. Yeah. So they'd have to move the stumps and then probably like harden it out or reinforce it or anything? I think really you could just go in and push them to the back and get them out of the way. Okay. And then I think we would have to just monitor it to make sure that we're not bringing up any knotweed that you know, was hiding down below. And I'm, I'm happy to go meet with the selectmen and see if they can get the highway department to do it. I don't think there's a big rush this year. You know, if they, no. they can't do it till next spring, so be it. And then we just have to let the Forest Service know that that parking lot is now being constructed so they could go up and move the gate. If we were asking the highway department to do that, would the, the pay for that still come through us through the Baker Trust or would that come out of the highway department? I guess we'd have to ask the selectmen, but I, I would hope that possibly the highway department would just go up and do it. Gotcha, okay. I'm kind of disputing that. So, Having the Forest Service build the parking space triggers an environmental assessment, but moving the gate itself does not. That's correct. Okay. Okay, I'm catching up. I'm getting that. Yeah. The gate is just going out to the true bottom. Right. Okay. Um, so if people are happy, I'm, I'm willing to go meet with a selectman at some point in a, one of the future meetings and ask them if they could get the highway department to do it. Unless somebody else wants to do it. Um, when is their next? Let's see, into November. Is it tomorrow? Uh, elections it tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, elections yeah. tomorrow. Oh, you know what? I, I think they had a meeting today because. It doesn't have to be a meeting. I saw something on the news. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't see their next meeting. It's not going to happen until. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have their next one up there, I don't think so. I would, I would just take a look at when my schedule map with this has to be put on and do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then once we move, as I say, we should get a sign that just, so when people come to the first lot, it just says additional parking. There. Right. Um, okay, I guess we, we could hear a motion to just Authorized can they go ahead and speak with the selectmen about that? Yes, we'll call it up there. I'll make a motion for can they speak with the selectmen about moving the gate and talk with the highway department about moving the parking lot. That's awesome. Matt told Jim Minnis we would just contact them once the I talk, you know, we, we're going to pull it from the town as to when we would need the, the gate more. Second. second. All second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll also send something to Joey just to put it on there next. Well, I'll yeah, let me see because I, I, I just need to check my schedule to make sure I'm not. So I don't have the time I'm not available. Okay. Um, um, I, I did speak with Rick Davis after he, he mowed up there, and um, I don't know if anyone else has been up there since, but they did a good job. They moved the table around, cleaned up some of the uh, deadfall that was there, so did a nice job. So it was awesome. Looks good. He was, able, he was able to get around some of the, the piles in the orchard, so that should not be an issue in the future. I think his, his opinion was, in the future, if we were to do more Cutting like that earlier in the season, that burning would probably be the best way to, to handle that slash. So, um, but yeah, thank you, Rick. Um, did he, was that just mowing in Hall's land or was that cutting part of the view shed as well? No. He did not do any of the view shed cutting, it was just the field maintenance and the orchard maintenance. Okay. Well, the, the, the view shed, the big view shed is, was actually mowed. Which is separate than the big view shed. Is it, in the near future, is going to need to have some cutting because the saplings are beginning to get up to about 15 feet by right now. Yeah, right. I was thinking of. Uh, yeah, I assume that he mowed the what I would call the big view. I was thinking of like the shotgun view 
in the hunting term being from the actual ledge, right? That's the one that you're talking about that still needs more. No. 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 Where the table is? Oh, okay. Where the table is, what the Simone picture is, mm -hmm. the field has been mowed. Mm -hmm. But when you go down from the bottom of the field, originally when that view shed was made, they cut a lot of the trees out. You're getting a lot of that regrowth of red maple, etc. that's now about 15 feet. Okay. In the summer, when that leaves back out, it's just going to get higher and higher, and pretty soon you're going to lose that view shed. So that's going to need a major brushing. At the last meeting, we did discuss about the Jackson Ski Turning Foundation, and they were willing when they, their crew was up there clearing the trail from Wild, the top of the Wildcat Valley Trail all the way down, that they could brush out the view sheds for Hall's Ledge. And there's one down near the boulder mm -hmm. with a plaque on it. And then I believe there's another one on the Orchard Trail, if I recall that. I think there's three of them. Yeah, there's like a couple that are on the Orchard Trail. Yeah, yeah. And, and the meeting minutes here sort of reflect that we need people out there to be quite frank. It's, that's all we kill. I mean, when there's a crew out there, you can see what needs to be limbed and the, yeah. the stuff that's growing back and being cut without getting too bureaucratic about the whole process. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're cutting the trees per se as much as saplings. Yeah. Tree, but it's just redoing what's been done to yeah. the past. Yeah. And if you don't do it after a while, then yeah, you're cutting trees. Yeah. Okay. Um, any, anything else on Prospect Farm? Mm -hmm. And once. Once we get the parking lot and that moved, then I, I'll, I'm willing to work on just redoing the map up there, et cetera, but there's no sense doing that until we have all the new stuff in place. Um, just to, to indicate where there's the new parking would be? Yes, yeah, and you know the, the map up there is a good map, the big one, but we probably should update at some point. But at some point, I think we need to also talk about Redoing the signs where the old cell holes are. Yeah, I was going yeah. to say some of them are, are broken in half and gone and missing. And yeah. Yeah. Like I know the one opposite from the quail trail, that one's like broken in half. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that one. The one up by the orchard is still good. I was at there maybe two weeks ago. Let's be like right before they mowed. Maybe a week ago. Um, that one's still good. And then there's another one that was broken too, and I don't remember where it is now. I can't think. Uh, the, maybe the one coming down the... I think a lot of them. The best end. Yeah. Up in the oh, section. yeah, that one's broken too. So the Johnson. I would say that's a job yeah. that next spring. Yeah. yeah. When did those originally go in? Mm. Or happen? Oh, that was a lot. That was because yeah. Margaret wrote those. Yeah. So that was when Margaret was. So that's yeah. at least... Six years? Yeah, five years ago, six years ago. It was a while ago. Okay. Um, they last because those were just like... Those weren't the most expensive yeah. signs in the world. They lasted longer than I thought they would have. Yeah, yeah I think they were like a like foam core. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah, so maybe something a little more durable. Okay. Um, Jackson Falls um, went up and installed a small section of the rut guard material in front of where the porta potty shed is. How did you do that? Couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So you said I saw that email that said uh, I couldn't make it. Check up on your email. <laughs> um, You're turning red, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was up there too, and I was like, I didn't see that. Um, I, I don't know how well it's going to work with just the wood chips. The wood chips are just too compressible to get them in there to like fill out the cells mm -hmm. and be rigid enough that you could roll. Over it, did you, did I, Sarah? Try? I, I didn't even try. I, I went to go look at it before, and I, I just said this. You know, having worked there in the wheelchair a lot, that this, it's too soft. Um, my thought, and I just mentioned it to Ben before the meeting started, is it might make sense to try that with just having the town bring in sand and put it in, because if you looked at the YouTube um, demonstration of that, you know, they they're using it, putting in sand and then packing it down. Like and that might be a better maybe. surface, you know, for a wheelchair to be able to get through and access to the uh, to the porta potty. Or maybe more like a uh, rotten rock kind of. Or a rotten rock, rock yeah. Or something a little bit more packable. Yeah, something that could be, be damped. Yes. Damped, correct. Yeah. 
and yeah, so and seeing how it, it it wears on the edges, so with that soft material, without having something to ramp up, because it's quite it's you know it's three inches thick, mm -hmm. so something to ramp up to that, it's hard to it, you know it'll just flop over and the edges, so I think it works. In theory, just not the wood chips. So I guess we'll see. Yeah. They were able to roll the porta potty out over it, so it's, it didn't destroy it getting traffic. But mm. um, it might settle down. You never know. Wood weather. Well, you'd, yeah, it'd be a long road. Uh, I think it would be a, a more you know, adding and adding and adding until it comes. Right, right, a constant maintenance thing to keep mm. as it packs down into those cells to make sure that mm. the material stays above that mm. so that the plastic doesn't start to get broken down by getting locked on. Itself, so mm. Mm. it was it was a good attempt. It was, um, and you were able to spread it from there to the top of the steps. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then there, so I guess we just need to get another day in there. There is a second pile. There is a second yeah. pile there. Yeah. Is day. the first pile gone now? No, no I, I didn't it's about halfway through at the top, yeah. and then there's another pile at the yeah, uh, cabin access. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know what, I mean, my schedule's still crazy. Yeah, I'm struggling to find free time. Yeah, yeah. We can volunteer Tom and Dick. Yeah, because they're not here. Okay. Great. How's our That's the beautiful part about meetings. Yes. <laughs> and why you should always be at them. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Um, well. Uh, yes. I, I guess the, the, my my idea of trying to do it in the evenings kind of yeah. destroyed now. I did not, like, despite it happening every year, forget that, oh, we lose that hour of trying to get work done and anything, so. Uh, what I might suggest is that people have time, as opposed to trying to get time when we can all go, if people just go. Just can go. I mean, the, That's what I the top pile, which is the last half, yeah. I think you can still put it and have it come up to Valley Cross Road, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which I think is the purpose of having it dumped there. Mm -hmm. And then the lower one just if you can go up with a wheelbarrow or something, you just start looking at the obvious places yeah. that you need to be, and just do as much as you can, and then if somebody else can follow, as opposed to putting the burden on Ben to mm -hmm. guess all the show up. Um, I guess it be okay to leave a wheelbarrow up there, what? just to have a communal. Well, I was just going to ask that. I would ask, maybe as a bill, Terry, if we can leave a wheelbarrow in this place, yeah. or just at the end of his driveway. Because that, that would make it a lot easier rather than... Yeah, it's a hassle. Yeah. Okay. Or it can be. I'll ask, I'll ask Bill, because he had expressed interest in wanting to help too, and I just hadn't been able to get to him about that. Um, it should go pretty quick, I would think. A little bit at a time. Um, yeah. Barbara, are you here for Jackson Falls? <laughs> Um, just basically because um, you had, someone had suggested, I think, in the minutes that I read that that's poured out by you moved. Was that, um, or did I read something by the side of the There was discussion of rotating, possibly moving, but I think we Just where the, the door was oriented. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking because that really causes havoc with with people that are stopping there that aren't even at the falls that are stopping and going to the bathroom and then they, they park in, you know, the resident parking or on the corner or wherever they can where it says no parking. And um, I don't know, and, and then people don't read signs anyway, so yes. <laughs> I think that's, yeah, struggling with, with that, but. That's not a Jackson problem, that's a universal problem. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh yeah, for sure. But um, another thing too was about the question of signage and um, I know there's a lot 
but it certainly has calmed down the problem that we've had. Um, I think the police have been doing an amazing job, an absolutely amazing job at um, constantly monitoring and keeping the road clear because people will still pull over to the side and put their blankets on and just wait. And um, so, I mean, compared to that very first year, it's um, a lot better. There's no more hammocks and trees and stuff like that. It was just horrible. But I, I do think that um, that the towing part, it needs to stay. A no parking, a no parking doesn't, doesn't mean anything to them. But if, you, if, if that's attached to it, it doesn't make any difference. They'll say, you know, if they, the price of tickets, you know, that they're going to ticket them with, they could care less. If they're going to, they stay, they get a ticket, then they get another ticket or what have you because it's been very, but it hasn't been the way it had been. You know, people are not spending the day the way they used to. Um, and I, and the one thing though, you know, they did add the, Sticker, sticker needed, that really has to be kind of really pumped up a little bit for the, for the resident parking. That's what, all I'm thinking is um, because you just, when you go by, I, I go by it 20 times a day. <laughs> and not that I'm even monitoring it, but I mean, I, I stopped people when we just had that really bad rainstorm. There, were, there was a car on that curve coming up the hill, not even, yeah. to, not even to the parking. He was stopped there. And his wife was out taking a video, and it's a blind corner. And I came around, and I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. And so I just stopped, and I said, "Excuse me." I said, "Do you realize that you're on a blind corner? I mean, you could get hit." And he said, "Well, my wife's taking a picture." I said, "Well, she's been out there for a while videoing." So. I try to be so cordial with some of these people, but it's just like they don't have a clue. And just, I somehow ask myself, how do they get here in the first place? Hmm. How do they find it? You know, where did, <laughs> it's how did they leave their home and come up and, and do all of this? But I think everybody's found that there's been a big improvement because of signage and because mm -hmm. of what we had to do. It would be so nice to be able to take them down. Yeah, the people would respect the fact that you, you know, that you're in the middle of a road. It just it just bothers me, but I do think the tow thing should remain, and I mean it's a, it's all, all up to what everybody's decision is going to be. But I think that the the more it just adds a little emphasis. Two, um, just sort of two follow up comments. One is the the people stopping and taking pictures, particularly when the falls is running high, is no different than people see moose. They stop in the middle of the road. And I see it happening when people are going up by the Kendall's fields where they look out toward Mount Washington. And they, I mean, that's, we aren't going to solve that stupidity, um, no matter what kind of sign we put up there. No, it's true, and I wasn't even asking for a sign yeah. there, but I mean, that's uh -huh. just an example of what's actually going on, and, and, and um, oh boy. But yeah, I mean, when people see moose, you see it all the time. So, yeah. um, on on the signs, um, well, well I, th I think we're going to get talk about the signs here. We are looking at having Jackson Ski Touring Foundation because they do have a sign maker that can take the plastic wood and change the current no parking signs that, that are sort of the industrial ones mm -hmm. to just say no parking. And I think we're going to discuss today the language we want on it. But there is an issue that has come up, and that is, is that the police have indicated that, um, you know, to put up tow zone is, is to some extent an empty threat for the simple reason is we can't be told. <laughs> yeah, so then it gets around to... But it's a deterrent. Well, that's it, the point of it. Yeah, it's just... Um, but it's like yelling fire after a while. Yeah. It's, it's, it's empty. But if it works for Because they have, to, they have to stay with the car until it's towed away. So they get their staff tied up for long periods of time. If they get somebody who's really belligerent, they can still tow. Mm -hmm. But for us to indicate that it's a tow zone, and then people are illegally parking and they're not getting towed, it becomes no more of a deterrent yeah. than anything else. But I think you know, 
I mean, I'm, I'm just giving my personal opinion, but I think the proper signage there is what we have, which is no parking. Yeah. Um, getting onto a threat that you're not going to carry out is not, to me, a good policy. I think, I think the other part of it, well, besides the fact that it's just more words on a sign, which already looks kind of busy, and anything we can do to make that look more tasteful, I think is uh, important. But I think it's an interest. It's a strange place to have the no tow zone, or have it be a tow zone when you can see it clearly from basically where you're standing along the river, as well. So it's not as if, if someone sees a tow truck, it's, you're going to run up there. Mm. You know, it just seems like at the Dinah's bath. It's like sure you've left the area. You're not within the vicinity of where your car is, but there. I mean, people are fifty feet. 50 yards away from where their car is parked to see a tow truck. It's, it's just not going to happen anyway, but it just doesn't seem... Like for someone who's really trying to just get away with it, I see a tow truck coming, I'm running up, I'm going to move my truck. That's what they're thinking. They're not thinking like, well, I did a little no research. one's going to tow me. No. I did a little research, and I contacted Paul Deliangeli, who's the Conway Town Engineer, and I spoke with Linda Runs. And she's the par parking... Was she the parking... Enforcement officer for the town of Conway for the Parks and Recreation. And basically, and she grew up in Jackson. And she said that, um, she said you have to, have, she should have no parking, you should have toes on. She said you have to have that because otherwise, you know, they don't care about the money. She said you should have a $100 fine on the sign. But she said if you don't have toes on, they don't care. It just doesn't have any effect. And yeah. that was, that's her experience, and Paul, you know, basically emailed me pretty much the same thing. He thought they hadn't towed. At least he didn't know that they had towed, they just had it on the signs. Linda said they had towed, but not many. So in other words, it has deterrent effect because they haven't had to tow many times at all. Did she say in the instances when they did have to tow? She said, well, it's the place. They come and they... They do their thing and they get their records in and that sort of thing. So, um, I'm still not for it. Yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm talking to somebody who's doing it in another town, and her opinion is you have to have the tow because otherwise people don't care if it's just money. Well, I I would say the history of this summer is said. Yes. I, I mean. The police can still go up and put the paper signs up there like they did periodically if, if they're going to actually think in terms of, of tolling. There's nothing to stop that. The question is whether we're, we're posting it with something that is telling what the police are going to do when the police say most of the time they can't do it. Well, the police have said they, they don't intend to, yeah. to, you know, to basically follow through, but they have no problem with us putting toes on, on the sign. And I think the idea is that it is, a, it is a deterrent, and I know you're saying that it's not going to deter a lot, everybody, but it may deter enough people so that you don't have that area piling up with cars on a hot day. Mike, do you have anything to add to this? <laughs> with all my municipal parking expertise? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I. Uh, I guess that uh, it, I guess that if we're not actually going to call a tow truck, like if that's never going to happen and it's just going to tie police cut time, it seems silly to write that we're going to tow on there. Um, you know, I, I don't know how much of it. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess I don't know how much of a deterrent it is either. I just don't know if I feel like strongly enough either way. I don't yeah, know if I'm like. Either. I don't know if I feel like, like really strongly enough either way on on whether or not we. Um, I know parking's an issue. I know it's something we're dealing with. Um, it's like totally beyond what I, you know, kind of my realm of expertise. And so I kind of, you know, wish that we could kick this more to like the experts in that field and be like, what's the most effective thing? Like, I don't think there is any expert or no, no algebraic is. answer to this one. It's, well, I did, I did speak yeah. with the parking code officer enforcement officer for another town. Yeah. And she said you have to do it because oh. otherwise you know, they'll pay the ticket. But if they if but if they have a fear that their car will be gone when they come back. Well, they're not going anywhere. 
but they are. They're, they're going up and down the rocks, and, and they're not paying attention all the time as to whether or not their car is being moved. I just, if you were out laying on the rock, um, you know, it's not like it's not like you would be hearing um, a siren if a, if you know if a tow truck were coming. But if you're laying out on those rocks and they, and people pay no attention, Brian, when they're there, they're they're in the water, they're doing they're doing their thing. Um, I just think it's a deterrent, and it's just I know when I see tows on, I mean I I wouldn't park there. I don't park because there's no parking. <laughs> well, I, don't, yeah. I just don't understand the concept of like, that doesn't scare me anymore. It just says no parking. Like, you look around, like, it's clearly I'm not supposed to park here. There's no car there. I think if you're not controlling the parking based on the fact that it says no parking, if there's no enforcement, then you need every sign, every threat you can possibly do. But if, if it's enforced and the spaces are shown that you're not parking there, and people tend to follow that, I see. And you're going to get people that aren't going to pay attention to anything. Well, the two hour, they, they do monitor the two hour parking. I mean, they so if they're by monitoring by. the two hour parking, then and how that's is someone going to be them. parking? How is someone going to park to a point that they need to be towed? I, I'm going to make a motion that we move on this. We've probably discussed this for two or three meetings. We've all said the same thing over and over and over again. Um, do we need to vote on it? And I, I would, well, if we're going to have a sign maker make aesthetically more pleasing signs, we need to know whether we're putting no parking or no parking tow zone, which is what we've been debating for God knows how many meetings. Isn't there only one? How many signs say tow zone? Isn't there, is it there there's, no, there's one, one at the emergency okay. exit, and that makes sense in yeah. that location yeah. because that's no different than like a fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. And that's so, the only so one. That is the only one that is up to you. So, and then the police have periodically put temporary no tow, I mean temporary tow zones up there. When it's been extremely busy. Yeah. And that's but the only permanent no tow zone right now is where one will legitimately be required. Mm -hmm. Because it is an access point. If there is a vehicle parked there, the town will probably exercise the towing. Just like if somebody parked in front of a fire hydrant. Well, I, I guess before you make your motion, I, I would just say that we do have an actual deterrent, which is the the the, the, the police will will write a ticket. Like, I mean, we could put that on the sign, which is what also the signs along West Side Road have. Indicating that there is a, a parking ticket that will cost you, and I, I can't remember what. Yeah. $100. $100 now. Because they're only $50 right now, I think. So that, that, is, that is an effective, like that, that is a, a true thing. The police will write a ticket there if they park there, but. I again feel that it all comes down to the, the person enforcing it. You could write everything and anything you want, but if no one enforces it... Well, just it's a, it's a clear communication of, like, it, it's, it's not an actual deterrent because it will never happen. Mm -hmm. the, the, unless the Chief Burley has indicated that the only time a car will be towed is if it is in the public roadway or is causing a safety hazard on the road, and then it has to be moved because it's a safety issue. But a car parked on the shoulder that's off of the road, like they will ticket it. Mm -hmm. So if there's a sign saying that you will be ticketed if you park here and you get a ticket, that is a deterrent because it's made that connection to someone and they say, oh, like I've, the people I've talked to said, oh, I didn't think I would get a ticket parking here. I got a ticket parking here. I will not park here mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. And I will tell people that they are ticketing there. But mm -hmm. In fact, our two hour parking has worked amazingly well. Mm -hmm. And that functions on a ticket, not mm -hmm. a tow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it yeah. also re requires that, I mean, the thing I like about the idea of having two hour parking means that there's someone coming through periodically checking 
which means they're also periodically checking about people who are parking in foolish places, which is, you know, I think the step that sort of, sort of started helping to get this problem under control was that the police were actually, you know, they weren't monitoring before, but they're actually more proactive in the monitoring. But did they tow any, or did they tow anything? Anybody who's been there for more than two hours, they just put a ticket on. They, they would just, just take so it. So basically, and, they and then they the come back day. again. Yeah. The next two hours, if they're still there, they get a second one. But it's it's worked fairly well. It's I really mean, worked really well. I, I was going to say when when I sit here and look at this past summer, I was in. The, I mean, are there a few outliers? We're never going to get a hundred percent efficiency in what you seek to do in this game because there's always idiots out there that are going to. Mm -hmm do whatever they're going to do. But I thought the summer worked remarkably well. We did not tow a car. Mm. And yet we think that this is going to be a great big thing. Those two or three percent of people are just going to do what they're going to do, regardless of what the threat is. Mm. But yeah, I think having having this sort of conversations, the past school meetings, I think I've, I think I fall in the camp of just no parking. Yeah. Have the police enforce it every two hours, and then if it really does get really bad during the high peak, you know, Fourth of July or whatever, then they can come up with the paper signs. Or we could up. we could also make. We talked about the fact that we can always add to our sign with a smaller sign that says yeah. tow zone. It's the exact same font, same thing, but we just don't. Yeah, I think mean, I, mean, I personally I think, you know, if someone did make a mistake. And has your car towed? That sort of sucks too, you know. Like someone did park there, and went for a bike ride, came back, and two and a half hours later, your car's gone. It just seems ridiculous to me. Yeah, I think especially for a walk, this has been effective. You know, I think. Went for a yeah. walk and went to the falls, and then walked further, and then came back, and your car's towed. It just seems. But they're already parking. There are no parking zones. No, but we're talking about the two hour zone if they park there for four hours with their car get towed after they got their second ticket. There's, there's no towing sign there. The no, only one is that it if, if, if it became the part of the no parking sign, just in general, just like the theme of like cars getting towed, just seems. I th when I read it, my, my thing was the one sign that is there that you were thinking of taking that away. That's the only one that I think needs to be there. No, I think the one for the, the handicapped space has to stay. I think that's always been. Well, the, the, the handicap stays, but that's not a no-toe. It's the emergency vehicle. The emergency it's the vehicle. emergency yeah. vehicle yeah. one, yeah. and that should stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yes. the emergency vehicle. That's, the only, that's yeah. the only one that I wanted to stay. Yeah. I, I, and as far as the rest of them, I don't think that they that they need it there because the monitoring has been... Yes, so okay, so we're in agreement. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay, so... So my motion is we move ahead with the no parking. I get, and I did work out with the, uh, if you have a four by eight sheet, you can get 12 signs if they're 16 by 24. But I would point, okay, but that's a huge sign. And you can get 24 of them if you do a 12, yeah, if you do a 12 by 16. That's still big. And that's still, and we can make them smaller than that, but the 12 by 16, well, that's that's it is roughly, yeah, yeah. it would be like this. That's, that's pretty big. I, I, I mean, it would be a little bit. My yeah. feeling last time I went by and actually like consciously really just took a look at it and just like thought, of, wow, this is pretty ugly. The sign, it's just in general, yeah. is, is ugly. So as much as I didn't want to get too into are you talking about the, the just the just in these? general just <laughs> the, just the <laughs> amount of signs some are crooked they're just it's just it isn't beautiful i mean it's not going to be but so what, from a um, standpoint you, of just you looking say at aesthetically it and saying nicer like, okay, um how would we make it look nicer the the jackson's heat during foundation has been changing their trail signs over to it's essentially a plastic wood yeah. and they do have an extra 4x8 sheet that we can buy from them, and their sign maker can make the signs for us. And essentially, when they chisel down through, it's multi-layer, so when they chisel down through the brown, you would have white lettering that would say no parking. Yeah. And so it would be kind of like going to a national park as opposed to, yeah. I mean, I agree oh, that, with you. That would be perfect. Yeah. They, they look, look really nice. The signs look really nice. Would they be on, still on a metal 
I think we'll have those things are heavy, and how well a metal post, the metal post we have up there, we may need to go and buy some wooden posts, but we can put them. Depends what size. If you put up a big sign, it's actually going to be too heavy for those metal posts. I can tell you that right now because Jackson's put some big ones on metal posts, and they, it's just too much. They want to move around in the ground. Mm. Um, if we do something that's sort of conventional sign, you could put them on the metal, and if we want to. Good aesthetics. We could go buy some pressure treated posts and just put them into that. That would be really good. Yeah, yeah it just looks uh, like an afterthought, I guess, just in general. Yeah. It doesn't look But it was an afterthought because we never in our lives have ever seen that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I don't know if it's just they're not on the same height. Or but every place or is seeing it. Prospect is seeing it. The forest is seeing it. Everybody. Um, it just looks. People want to get out. I, I mean, no, it's I feel mixed about it because I'm glad to see people getting out yeah. even though there's so many out there but um, you know they stop looking at their screens all the time and get outside yeah. now they're outside and now we're pissed off because they're outside <laughs> well size wise so is this your, your motion is to get a basically a quote from them or to get an estimate? Of they have one extra sheet that's kicking around right now that we can get access to. Right. And then otherwise they got to go. And I don't know what the new prices are out there, but it would roughly cost 600 bucks for the sheet. Plus, right. um, they probably would have one of their, we'd have to pay for the guy who, I mean, if we have a volunteer, it would be less, but I would say it's going to be roughly 600 bucks to have those signs made. Which, you know, if you're doing 24 of them, which, is a 12 by 16, that's 25 bucks a piece, which is about the same price. I mean, you can buy a discount from metal yeah, ones, the, the small metal ones. Yeah. Somewhere in the 25 to 40 bucks, I looked it up. So would those signs also be at the two hour parking thing? No. Just, the, just those, okay. Just, yeah, I, I would leave the two hour parking the yeah. way they are. Yeah. That sounds great. So just to clarify, so if, if it's really a hot day, would you guys have any objection to putting the signs that the police chief puts on the right-hand side of the road to put it on the fall side? That's up to the police because well, they're they the ones that are monitoring it. No, but they said that they have no problem with us using their signs and putting them on the fall side if it's a hot day. Just inquiring. I think I would leave it to the police to decide when they put it out, when they feel that they're actually going to do it, as opposed to us trying to become what the police department has hired yeah. to do. And that is that is what they do, and when then they also do on the fall side on the private property, they posted them there too, because um, and they're just you know those the, the paper ones, because people were just I, I remember when Dick Devalian had put um, white yeah he had like white things no, and he spaced them yeah. he spaced them far enough away that people thought they were like talking. Yeah, yeah. He was so angry. <laughs> but that's when the science started going. Well, thank you. I just, that's why I came, so I, I won't take up any more of your time, but thanks. That sounds really great. Thank you very much for what you're doing. Thanks, Barbara. Thanks for your Take care. Um, so I guess go ahead and finish your motion. Yeah. <laughs> I move that we have the. Uh, Jackson Ski Touring Foundation sign maker make, and we can, I'll work with them on the final size um, to make signs to say no parking. And that doesn't eliminate the ability of the police to put out their other signs temporarily if, if they want to, as, as to tow. But I really think we should leave that decision to them when they think that they're going to be doing it. Now, would there be a reason for us to decide how many signs we need? And then own the cutoff so that we could then use that cutoff to possibly create other add ons if we need to. You mean you know, additional signs? Yeah, let's just say that if we could get 16 out of that sheet, do we need 16 no parking signs is one thing, and are we just trying to put our, our count said 16? What are we going to get before? That's, that's what's up there. It's when you go out there and then up the valley cross road. Yeah. I think that we, 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 we did a site visit, we went through and we did it. Yeah, I think that was even with that. that I think that, that, that was like, I think there's more than 16. That's I think we went out there, I think we're like, we don't need this one, we don't need this one. Yeah. And I think it's still. But if you want to go valley cross, you know. That's probably why it's terrible. And to be honest, if we have a few extra, 
Mm. Some of yes. them get knocked down by yeah. snow yeah. plowing, whatever the case may be, is, is not like. I know, I just tried to picture that, like walk, him walking yeah. steps and thinking 16, no parking signs. Because like. when the sign maker sets it up, because it's all CDC, yeah. um, you know, he, he will set it up and then it's just a template and it's bing, 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 bing. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, and, and the more you want a whole bunch of different custom signs, then you're, you're just getting into more no. you know, time. Yeah. I think it will look like less than 16 and be less than what's up there now, though, mm. when they have the, the fake wooden ones up. Because like right now, when I drive by, it's like... Well, when there's no cars there, yeah, it's like, it's, you're, it's, like, you're like, oh my gosh. I cannot believe we even talk about this. Uh, it's like, what a joke. This is horrible. But I think it'll, I think it'll look way better than blend. I just don't think it'll notice as much. I think it's going to go blend in. Yeah. Well, we talk about preserving the aesthetics of the old crafts, but... Right, I mean, it's, it's like when there's the the cars and people there, you don't notice the sign so much. When there's no one there and you ride by, and you yeah, just ride and go, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, and, then, yeah. and then we would have to um, probably go to the Jackson Fund there to pay the cost of the material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, if you give me the okay for up to 600 bucks, and then I'll, I'll work out with Jackson what the final is. Can we just can we have a say on the size before they're cut? Yeah. As a group, just because that first side was that, that was that was big. That sounded like a. Like I, a I meant to stop and measure. Like a the yield group. sign. Yeah. <laughs> when you go online, the metal ones come in different sizes. Mm. But um, I mean, my my feeling, you want to put it like this. Most likely, it just says no parking. I mean, the alternative is like this, but if you're putting it on a post, that's going to be more stable because those things are heavy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're durable, they'll last a long, long time, but if you're putting them on a post, mm -hmm. you don't, in particular, if we end up temporarily putting them on the metal that we have time, you don't want it like this. Well, another thing is, let's say we wanted to do it right, and we did have the money, and we could talk to, or put it out to bid, is the right way to say it, but to, Typically, Garrett, Eastern Greens, you know, maybe there is a way we could get a price for what it would cost to have them put on a nice right. wooden post and just be done with it. And maybe that's why they don't look good, you know. Because they're not done professionally here, or aesthetically. Yeah, I mean, just someone who can actually has the time and can do it tastefully and just say, we're really trying to make this look nice. Yeah. I well, prefer that myself. Let me suggest we do that because we are going to put those signs up this fall. The sign maker will just, when he's got time, mm -hmm. he's going to do it. So we wouldn't probably have the signs till the spring anyways. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to give them the okay, I don't want to tell them we're going to proceed and then not. No, no. You know, yeah. Say, oops, you know, sorry. I don't know what you're going to do with your 20 signs. Or no. No. Do, I need to, do I need to make a motion or do you have a motion to go? I forgot. I had made a motion. You made a proceed ahead. ahead. Um, to spend up to six hundred bucks, and I don't. How much do we have still in our current budget before the year ends out? Oh, the fifteen hundred dollars, yeah. whatever it is. Not that yeah, much. No, not that much. But if it were to come, there is funds to spend in the wildcat. Right. Funds. Which is we have to go. To, I think the trustees mm -hmm. for that. If I got it correct. Yes. We need to do that before we make a commitment or after. Um, I haven't gotten a strict order of operations on that. We have in the past just voted to authorize that and they have okayed it. Okayed it. As long as we don't go over the principle or whatever. I, I forget how that thing is structured. Yes, we're only that. allowed to and maybe we'll get it in the what we're budgeted for next year. Yeah, I don't know what the carryover on that if that carries over. I mean, from what we get in in the operating budget. Yeah. Well, we have yeah. Our op, well, if we were to take it out of the operating budget, that's pretty tight. We also have the money market fund. Um, but the Jackson Fund is. That's what yeah, that's where it should come out of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's assume that this 
Because I'm pretty certain there is, because we haven't spent a lot. I mean, we spent some money, but not a lot. Uh, yeah, it was just the oh, sixteen hundred from the yeah. kiosk. So, um, and well, then we do the. I well, I, I I emailed with Helene about it a while ago, and she in like I can't remember the exact amount of money, but there was plenty of money to do whatever we were talking about with signs. So. so let's assume, I think it's safe to assume that there's sufficient, so I will just authorize Jackson to go ahead and, I mean, if they don't get paid, they, they would, you know, it's broken promise on that part, but uh, yeah, we'll I think there was... We have the money. Uh, we can come up with the yeah, money. Yeah, we can come up with the money. Big so. Yeah. Well, money, money market funds. Operating funds. Well, uh, I think what Ben's talking about is the conservation fund that gets created through lands that come out of uh, current mm -hmm. use. No, uh, is it different? We we have a a money market fund that has other. I don't know if it's budget carryover or, but we have access to other monies that are not our budget, which is what we've been paying. Like the. That's where the funds for the community garden were held. Okay. So, yeah. so we're safe. And um, in regards to discussing steel posts versus wooden posts, the reason I almost offer that is you know, we really feel like we're going to have the time to set 16 signs. And then if we did, are we going to be proud of how they look? So I'm not a, I'm willing to talk to a couple people who maybe can make some suggestions or. Uh, I think if you can get a quote, what it would cost just to get those. Yeah. Them, yeah. Because yeah, I mean there's there's bedrock and stuff there. Yeah. It's not the easiest. We just have to go say this is where. Yeah. Um, the number, but yeah. if you could ask them what it would cost for like yeah. 15, 16 signposts that way. Yeah. Then in the spring. That's what we have in to work. With. In the Wentworth Wildcat Fund. Oh. What is it? It's a, okay. some tea milk posts. <laughs> <laughs> and I think as we learned with the uh, the current sign down there, there is a lot of legend in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, the, the two people I would discuss it with would be, yeah, I mean, if the signs last a long time, you want the post to last yeah. a long time. And I not agree with you. Post that, the sign that holds up that post that cleans and, and just set them back far enough so the snow plows yeah, and take them yeah. down. And then there there might even be a level of responsibility kind of like we've had with the, with the fence where it's like starts to not look right, comes in, makes it look right, and we don't have I mean we're all stretched thin as volunteers. I can't we all have skill sets that we could do that work, but in the end you don't want to dodge it because you just can't make it work. Yeah. Show up and do shoddy work. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, well, if you can get. Yeah, I'll talk to a couple people. What it would cost for. What it, it's going to be what? A two by two or something like that? Yeah, Plus, I guess. Doesn't have to be. You don't want too big. No, whatever, whatever you'd suggest. I'm leaning on that. Yeah. You know, what's available and what they would. And I'll proceed ahead and get the Ski Touring Foundation to move ahead and make the signs. Okay. But something the same size as what's up there now. Just says no parking. Yeah, I don't remember if that's how it's really. 11 by 15, 16, yeah. something like that. I think they look smaller for a little bit. Does that make them look smaller? <laughs> <laughs> that's so trying, I think they're probably like they're bigger to go by. Well, look at, the, uh, look, look at the calendar there. Mm. You break that into those four, side, the four rectangles. I bet you they're bigger than that. They're bigger than that, aren't mm. they? But do they need to be? Well, well, you want you want big enough lettering, and they are going to be earth tones, so they're yeah. not going to stick out the way the reflective signs are that we have up there right now. We'll be repainting those letters with fluorescent orange. Or Pam will be toes. 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 <laughs> Take a little tape. One one other suggestion I would make is. People who still walk their dogs, they pick up the dog shit, put it in a plastic bag, and then they leave, leave it, it at the porta potty. 
Well, they for, sometimes they forget it. But we should have a sign at the port of body next spring. That says no parking? Yeah, just no parking. Toes on? Turn sir. No, um, no that, toes on. That, that basically says... Um, Fine. No, carry in, carry out, including your, your pet's yeah. mask. <laughs> Which I believe is what it says on the kiosk. Okay. That's it, okay. But that's, what they're doing is bringing it out and putting it where the porta potty is. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least they're not throwing it in the porta potty. I guess that would be the next step. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, the book probably did. Yeah. <laughs> well, Caitlin, the last time Caitlin was there picking up trash, and she talked to the, the septic pumper and that was his, the bane of his existence was people putting it in the pork potty. So. Yeah. yeah. So I suppose outside is yeah. not. Yeah. I mean, regardless. I, I think it's one of those like things that. that, that it's well, the same signs if you go into a, um, one of the forest services, um, outhouse. Well, it's not an outhouse, but essentially it's not a flush toilet. When they go in, they tell you not to put in sanitary napkins and this, that. Mm -hmm. I think we need a sign inside that says the same thing, no trash, no dog poops. Is it, is it wrong to provide a, some sort of a box that... Don't go there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the only reason that's say is that I, stuff. I'm just surprised that... There isn't a ton of it up there, but it is. Well, I'm but just surprised leave, that, the sanitary, that the, 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 the porta potty guys haven't realized that this is almost another element that they have to deal with now when they're bringing their, their even they're, they're being asked to bring their porta potties to a, a place that's more of a public, you know, it's being put there because people can't figure out where to go to the bathroom and they're walking their pets and surprised they don't realize that, hey, it's almost worth it for us just to put something here to, to take that waste because it's waste and we're... Well, let's fight that battle another day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, can you just, let's clarify the motion that's on the table and take a vote on that. If you'd like me to summarize or read, can we just think Go ahead, summarize. <laughs> the motion on the table is to authorize the spending of up to $600 to start. Do we want to okay the final size of the let me go up and measure what's up there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Roughly in that same size. Roughly the same size. And just to start on the fabrication of yeah. those. That, the, the, the yeah, so that we can install them next spring. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Moving on. Well done. And. Jackson Falls, things that we need to, or am I, I'm just going to move on. Yeah. Gray's Inn. Um, I have something about Gray's Inn. Um, so two things. One, it's still being used as a field trip location for Jackson Grammar School students, which is great. The loop trail back there. And two, um, I wonder what people's thoughts are. At one point we had interpretive signs back there. They are now degrading, and I think that I would be okay with just removing them and not replacing them. Yeah. Um, with the exception of maybe two of them. Uh, one of them is there's a small sign, which I can't remember. The last time I looked at it, it was fine, but I've been over there a while. The one that marks the orchard, the old orchard over here. There's, it's a very small thing. It just says, I can't remember, historic apple orchard or something like that. And then there's another one that's actually at the foundation, mm -hmm. and it says something like, you know, this mysterious foundation, this, this foundation was discovered in whatever year and was named the Mystery Foundation by the K-1 class at the grammar school or something like that. Um, maybe keeping those two and updating those and then just letting all the other ones come out. There was one about the view to Washington, which has grown in and is not a view anymore. And I don't know if we want to like maintain a sign, maintain a view. I just don't know how important that is. Um, and then there was another one about a glacial erratic, and then there was one about um, 
Carter Notch. Gunshot. Gun, gun sight gap. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can't really even see it anymore. It's like grown, it's like totally grown in. And it was like, when I looked at it, it wasn't like, oh, it's like grown in with some saplings. It's like, oh, that 60 foot tree down there. Needs to like, it's got branches that are covering it. So anyway, I was kind of thinking that it might just be time for those signs just to, to have a good run and just bring them out. I didn't know what people felt about that. I don't feel strong. Some people like really like those signs and they walk them all the time with their grandparents or grandchildren, that's great. Um, but I kind of thought maybe it was time for them to be retired. We can all, and we don't have to decide now, right? We can all go take a walk at some point and look and see if, if we think they're still important. The only one that I really think that makes sense is, to, would keep, really would be the, the one explaining the little, the, the, the foundation. Because you get up there and it's like, there's a foundation and there's like, historic garbage might be the right word. I don't know what you would call that. Broken plates and things like that Nittons. that were left over from the hotel. Those, those are the yeah. yeah. What's that? Midden. Midden, yeah. Midden. 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 Yeah. Um, and so, uh, anyway, I just thought we've got a lot of other signs we're dealing with, a lot of other places that need upkeep, and that's like a, a lower visited spot. And I thought maybe it didn't, maybe it just didn't need that much, as, as much attention. It made it a little easier on us. So, I support that. Just a thought. Okay. You can, you can ruminate on it um, but it is it's nice I mean, that's like I kind of feel like of all the easy walking places in Jackson that's the one that never gets used it's a really lovely it is. place to walk and not see anyone I see people I mean I walk there tree with my dog there are people are there, there people oh that's good yeah. oh that's good and I'm in the community garden I see groups of families going by they're oh, not excellent. out there long but they you know, at least a couple of times during the summer, it's going out there. I've never crossed, I've never Multiples. walked past a person or ridden Multiples. past a person. You get snowshoed in yeah. in the winter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it is on the, uh, on some of the yeah. maps. Yeah. And you get nestled in the folks. Yeah. 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 I had, you know, I didn't pay attention to it. I didn't look to see if the arrows were still there. I should check that next time I walk it. Are the arrows still up that show you how to get around the loop? Because there's one, because it's, it's, it's like that first, it's basically, if you go up and you go to the right, it's that first left. That people mm -hmm. miss because yeah. yeah. it kind of kind of looks like you should keep going. Going right, and yeah. Counterclockwise. So maybe I'll uh, I'll go take a look at that. No, I think it's good. I I, I think the signs were unnecessary up there. I, I never really cared for them that much, but um, okay. I think the mystery, the one for the foundation school. Uh, it doesn't the apple orchard one say that. People grew most of their own food or something like that. It's a silly, yeah, I can't remember what it says. It might talk a little bit about that. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. those, those views were cut. Um, oh, geez, those are, those are big cuts when they did reopen those. Mm -hmm. Nothing for the community garden. We're good. <laughs> Put to bed. Yes. <laughs> Put to bed. Put to bed. Uh, are we on the Wildcat River? Yeah. I saw on the minutes when I read them, well, I guess when they came out a while ago, I assume that I didn't see them this time, but I as well. And there's a question about monitoring the Wildcat River. Oh, yeah, I might have mentioned that. Um, and when I read, so I didn't, I didn't look at it recently. When I read the minutes when they first came out, I went and re-looked at it and read and like skimmed the CIMP. Um, and it does say that the town and the Forest Service co-share that responsibility for monitoring. It goes into the parameters to be measured. It goes into the um, protocols to kick in if like certain benchmarks aren't hit. But I couldn't see in the appendices or in the section that I kind of skimmed um, basically how often, like how, how often it's supposed to be happening. Um, it, and most of the wordage in the in the section is like, you know, to be determined by the town, uh, to be determined by the Forest Service. It didn't it didn't give like every five years or every year or every whatever. Um, a lot of the parameters are ones that need to get sent off to a lab. Um, and then there's a handful that could be like easily done by town volunteers and things like that. It did it did it did say like. Oh, you can the, the town can nominate volunteers to do this, um, but I didn't. I can look at it again more closely. I didn't read the entire document. I just read the two sections. 
Why is that? Anything. What's that? What is that? It's the, the, river, the management plan for the Wildcat River. But what did you call it? The CRMP? It's called the CRMP. Um, Conservation Resource Plan or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and it was probably written. I can't remember. 1980s. Yeah, 1980s. Um, and uh, I, to be honest, I, I didn't read the entire thing, but the two seconds I looked didn't give, like, Get into, get, didn't get into specifics. So I'm happy to look at that again um, to see, uh, to try to give it more more time. But I didn't see anything straight away other than that, yes, we are supposed to be monitoring. Yeah, I, I, looked, I, I was looking at DES as a program set up, and a lot of it was, you can do some of it on your own, but most of it, needs to go out to the lab, especially for the higher, mm. uh, well, they have their own testing system. So if we have, if you said, I could all go through that also, or I, I think it's on the... It's on the time, time so, yeah. I think the more eyes, the better, because by the time I tend to get to things like this, it's late, and I've started, my spectacle is over, so... Okay. <laughs> but there was, looking through GES, there was, like, some funding and grants for setting things up, so. Mm -hmm. And then I know there was also a question about, oh, I can't remember now, snow making or Great Brook or something. And I know that not all of Great Brook is in that. It's only like the lower part that's in. Great Brook is in it all the way up, at least past the wild. Um, Black Mountain area. Oh, is it past that? I thought it started at the snowmaking pond. I didn't realize that. It may stop there. Okay. I think it goes up. I'd, I'd have to check. At okay. least goes to the snowmaking pond. Okay. Because um, I know I saw something in there about watercolor. I can't remember. Oh, uh, there was a uh, there was a, a person in town thought it was septic coming down into the river. It turned out it was a, when we believe it was a snowmaking pipe that okay. when they were doing some maintenance. That had any flow in it. Silt. It was silt, not sewage. That's good. Yeah. yeah we'll send you the video. <laughs> uh, conservation easements. Who has the Rockwell? Oh, I, uh, yeah. I, I've already done it. I've walked the property, but I've not done the. Um, okay. What is this from, stuff? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, no, I walked it the other day. I did it uh, two weeks ago. Um, but, all right. That, that there wasn't anything kind of pertinent there, but. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, no, I will get it on the, I will uh, get on the spin up site to do it. Okay. And I'm sure I'll be able to find the password and log on in my email. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's there. I know it's there. I will, I will not, Every I'll, year. I will not ask you to send it out because I know it's somewhere in there. I just got to find it. I think it just shows up. I don't think I can type on it. Oh, there we go. There it <laughs> helps. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've, I've, I've got mine. Um, which one do you do? Are you doing Tilly? Tilly. Tell me. Yeah. It was interesting going walking because I went down there right after there was the, that big rain event. And you can see where the river had pushed up into the field and mm -hmm. like that, no no damage. But like, oh, yeah, there was some water moving through there. Yeah. Or where the river wants to go, where it has to go. Yeah. Yeah. Even want to go, of course. There was a good chunk of books underwater. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Um, oh, speaking of easements, did you hear that? I think officially, as of last week, Windy Farm is now under Windy Hill. Windy Hill, sorry, yeah, Windy Hill, excuse me. Yeah, that, I think it was official like last week sometime. That's very, very exciting. That's excellent. Yeah. Um, this just came in. I believe that is for the the bridge on Valley Cross Road. Just a notice for that mm -hmm. permit application. Um, this is a lot, right? Yeah, this is something. Else. Yeah, um, they're on it. We've just been notified. Oh, well. Um.
Thank you. I don't know if that just covers the standard that they have to do sediment containment mm -hmm. around the work area. Mm -hmm. Is it about the historic trust yes. for the plan? Yeah. Um, uh, I guess the email that came in from the Henny Historical Fund. Um, Looking, I don't know, in, in applying for grants like that, how specific they need to be to the intent. Because it seemed like it, it was more towards like housing materials mm. in a place, not for signage. Um, I didn't. Look, I didn't really look at it. It was just a, I thought I had and sent it out there. Um, but I don't that there. I don't know if we were going to be able to have enough time to do it, but they do it twice a year. So if that's something that we could pursue, I think that November and May. I, I, I looked at it, but I, I think my conclusions were the same as yours. Is we're just chasing money because there's money there as opposed to we have a need and this is a solution to the need. Right. Um, in which case, I sort of said, I'm not sure I want to launch you a lot of time on this. <laughs> right. W without having a, a genuine, solid application. Oh, yeah. I just thought, I just thought if there was... At yeah, some point, we, we, it may make sense. Yeah, just to pay, just to like, oh, we need to replace those cellar hole signs. Yeah. We'll just pay for it. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was, I guess, the only bit of new business. Um, any public comments? No. Right. <laughs> uh, That's across from the Anderson. Right. I'm not sure. I'll, I can look that up. I think that's one I that covered. Um, okay. So, is there a motion to adjourn? Um, before we go there, at the last meeting, the facilities committee in the town. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And my understanding is the questionnaire is going to go out and responses are going to be due by December 1st, which will be before our next meeting. And it probably means we can't officially respond to the questionnaire because we haven't seen it before December 1st. My, my thought was we just each individually put in. Um, but I, I mean, my own take is, is that this is an opportunity for the town, particularly with the Inflation Reduction Act, to take a look to see whether you know there, there's ways that they might be able to put in more solar for municipal facilities, et cetera. <clears throat> because the incentives are there that were not there before the Inflation Reduction Act. It doesn't mean that it still is going to make financial sense, but there are parcels in buildings here that would probably be right for additional solar. Mm. So what are you suggesting that we just suggest it as individuals? Or you... it's, it's hard to respond because I haven't seen the question here yet. But um, yeah, I mean, as a, as a board, I, that's a recommendation I would suggest mm -hmm. to, to this commission. But it's hard because we don't have the question here. Yeah, I, I, I guess it was my understanding from their meeting that the questionnaire was going to be a little open-ended and a little all of the above of future planning for the town. So I don't, I don't Quite frankly, I think as a commission, after we've seen it, even though they're asking for December 1st, that we can weigh in at any point we want to. It's just if you weigh in too late, then it's irrelevant. Correct, and I, I think also that their goal was to have something to take to town meeting, to present a town yeah. meeting, so I think we'll have an opportunity before then or at the town meeting yeah. if, to come up with some group consensus around around that. Or but, but I would suggest, um, you know, for everybody to take a look at it, not only the questionnaire, but I think you can go on the town website and see where, where Dick had it. It's, it's just a list of all mm -hmm. the stuff that's owned by the town. 
And, and I would suggest that we bring that up as an agenda item at our meeting in December, and then we can put forth our suggestions at that point afterwards. Thank you. You mean for the questionnaire or to just responses? We, we can weigh in. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's, what's the first Monday? December what? If we came up with something on the fifth, I'm sure that we can weigh in at that point. That sounds great. Do you want me to take this? And no, these are just. These are copied. These, they, this was mailed in. Yeah, these have all been mailed out. So. We didn't actually adjourn. But no, is there a motion to adjourn? I would make a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's my first one in three months. It's going to be a long one.